Today, I am going to share a romantic drama film story named Love Strange Love. In this story, you will see a mother to satisfy her 14 year son and to protect him from other women, she herself spends a happy time with him. Spoilers ahead, watch out and take care. An older man wearing a business suit is dropped off at a mansion by his driver. He is alone as he starts wandering through the rooms of the mansion. It is apparently abandoned with empty rooms, but has an aura of past opulence. The scene shifts to some 45 years earlier, where a 12-year-old boy is being escorted on foot from a train station by his grandmother. The older woman produces a letter and asks the boy to give it to his mother. They came near the gate of the same mansion the older man visited 45 years later, and the grandmother leaves the boy there. The gate is locked, but a woman greets the boy. He gives her the letter, saying it is for his mother, and she lets him in. The younger woman escorts the boy into the house. After they enter the house, another woman, who appears to be serving as a business manager, greets them. After being told about the letter for Anna, the boy's mother, the manager dispatches the first woman to find Anna. Meanwhile, many women in the house are hard at work, preparing for what appears to be an important upcoming event, cleaning and arranging flowers. The boy is escorted off to a side room by the manager. She questions the boy, who says that his grandmother left him there to stay with his mother. The manager seems shocked by the idea of the boy staying with his mother, but it isn't immediately clear why. Anna appears and embraces her son, commenting on how much more like a man he now is than he was the last time she saw him a year ago. The boy usually lives with his grandmother, not his mother, Anna. The boy waits in the foyer as preparations for the event continue. There are a large number of attractive women in the house, some of whom comment on or make flirtatious glances in the boy's direction. Meanwhile, Anna discusses the letter with the manager. As Anna and the manager continue to talk, it becomes increasingly apparent that the large mansion they are in may serve as some kind of brothel. The mansion is owned by someone named Dr. Osmer and the women apparently make a lot of money off of Dr. Osmer and other wealthy men, Dr. Osmer is currently most attracted to Anna, although he was formerly interested in the manager. As the activities in the house are illegal, it is dangerous to allow a 12-year-old boy to stay there, but Anna has no local family to send him to. Meanwhile, in the foyer, one of the women approaches the boy, makes eyes at him, and then returns to a group of women standing on the balcony. The boy looks very self-conscious. The manager, now referred to as the brothel's madam, summons a woman named Therese and instructs her to create a makeshift bedroom for the boy in the attic. Anna then escorts the boy past the group of women on the balcony, who continue to snigger at the thought of a young boy staying there. Anna scolds them for this. Anna takes the boy to her room, which appears especially opulent. Despite recognizing that something is strange about the house, the boy is too young to fully understand its true nature. Anna tells the boy to take a bath and change clothes. After the boy, Hugo, finishes his bath, Anna gives him a towel. He covers his private parts as he emerges from the bath, and Anna says it is now her turn. The same woman, who had been previously eyeing Hugo, approaches his room. She opens her robe to reveal her full frontal body. Hugo's eyes widen, but he soon closes the door. Hugo then spies on his mother Anna as she is taking her bath, observing her full body. Anna then escorts Hugo to his space in the attic. They pass a young topless woman, and the woman and Anna glare at each other. In the attic, Anna promises Hugo that eventually they will have their own house together, but that Hugo might have to return to his grandmother for a short time. This upsets Hugo. Someone, possibly Dr. Osmer, arrives and Anna leaves. Shortly after, Hugo observes the topless woman, Tamara, being instructed as to the role. She must play for a new customer. Anna and Laura then talk on the patio with Dr. Osmer, who arrived earlier. Dr. Osmer is a major political figure preparing for the Brazilian election to win the election. However, he needs an alliance with another man, who is coming to the brothel a little later as a client. The potential ally is to be offered the chance to sleep with Tamara who is said to always feel like a virgin. Dr. Osmer is offered the chance to sleep with Temora first. Temora then arrives on the patio. She wants to work permanently in this brothel, but to do so would need to relocate her entire family, and she wants Dr. Osmer's help on this. Anna and Dr. Osmer then spend some happy time together for an extended period. While Hugo watches, from his vantage point in the attic, Hugo appears to be able to spy on activities in several rooms in the house. 
Witnessing and having physical, Hugo seems to realize for the first time the true nature of the house and his mother's line of work and starts crying after completing pleasant work Anna and Dr. Osmer listened to a radio broadcast about the growing fascist alliance of the time between Hitler and Mussolini, implying that Dr. Osmer is a would-be leader of a Brazilian fascist government that would ally with the Axis if given the chance. The woman, who has previously shown interest in Hugo, arrives in the attic, complaining that all the men who patronize the brothel are slimy characters and implying she wants the chance to spend some good time with someone more wholesome like Hugo. She undresses, and Hugo starts after another woman approaches and starts crying for unknown reasons. She retreats to the roof soon after she comes back, puts her robe back on, and leaves. The planned event then begins that evening. A live band has been hired to provide entertainment. A group of mostly well-dressed men arrives at the party in two cars. Their apparent leader, a man wearing a tuxedo, is introduced to other guests as Dr. Benicio, the prospective political ally of Dr. Osmer. A group of women works on getting Tamara ready for her encounter with Dr. Benicio. As Hugo continues to take in events from his upstairs vantage point, Tamara asks Hugo, who is watching her, to come over. Tamara also invites Hugo to fondle her front body, which he does. Dr. Benicio expresses his appreciation for the invitation to the event, commenting that it is rare that he gets invited to such events. Hugo continues to fondle Tamora until Anna arrives and angrily dispatches Hugo back to the attic. Anna tells Hugo that she has to work in this job for a little while longer because the world runs on money and she needs the money so they can have a good life. Anna instructs Hugo to get ready for bed, stay in the attic, and not talk to anyone. Someone, presumably Tamora, in a teddy bear costume, emerges from the crate and gradually begins to undress. Hugo continues to watch from above. Tamara then retreats to a private room with Dr. Benicio. The resourceful Hugo finds his way into a crawl space adjacent to their room to spy on them, but isn't entirely quiet, making some noise that attracts the attention of Dr. Benicio. Dr. Benicio investigates, putting his hand into the crawl space, but is seemingly unable to touch or see Hugo. Still, he remains suspicious, perhaps thinking they are bugged, and asks Tamara what is going on. Tamara tries to reassure him that there is nothing, they only want to please him, but he pushes her away. Hugo returns to his attic and goes to bed, dreaming of physical with first one woman, and then a group of about six women. He starts his hand job while in bed to these images. The next morning Tamara gets dressed and leaves the room of Dr. Benicio, who remains fully dressed. She goes up to the attic, undresses, and climbs into bed with Hugo. They start engaging as Tamara prepares to mount Hugo. To start the main pleasure work, Anna approaches. Tamara quickly gets out of bed and puts her robe back on. It is still obvious to Anna what has been going on, and she fights Tamara, slapping her several times. Anna tells Hugo that he will need to return to his grandmother. Anna says that staying in the brothel wouldn't be good for Hugo, but he has trouble understanding and starts to cry. Anna tries to comfort him, then removes her robe, revealing her body to Hugo. Anna then allows Hugo to make love to her and they enjoy a happy time together. After that, a car arrives to return Hugo to his grandmother's house. The scene shifts back to the present day, where it is revealed that the older man in the house is donating the house to charity. He seems himself to be a very senior figure politically, being referred to as Your Excellency. In the film's final scene, the older man reveals that the young Hugo is his younger self from 45 years earlier. And the movie ends here. Thanks for watching guys, and make sure to like, share, and subscribe to our channel.